You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep the conversation moving forward by supporting the show. You can do that by sharing it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, absolutely nothing less than five stars. For any reason, we're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description, so you can do just that. Today's verse of the day is coming to you today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. <laughs> really? That's all it is? That's the verse. <laughs> all right. Shout out to Dr. Dwayne Carson of the Date the Word app. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, that's what we're doing, right? Even this radio show, it's a form of rejoicing. It's praising God for the gifts and the resources that he's blessed us with. But it's just a way to live your life, that you always rejoice. And it doesn't mean that times are always happy, but you always are grateful to God for what he's doing in your life. Yeah, that's why it's a command. It's not dependent on your circumstances. It's not dependent on your situation. No matter what's happening, rejoice. Mm-hmm. Choose joy every day in your life. You know, we have my wife and I have that hand hanging somewhere in our in our house. It's hanging in our, our dining room. Up on the wall, it's just a canvas that says, choose joy. Because mm-hmm. you have that choice. That's right. No matter what's happening in your day, you could be having the best day, you could be having the worst day, something in between. You could be stressed, you could be relaxed. Choose joy. That's right. I mean, Paul reminds the Thessalonians there, and it's a great reminder for us. Rejoice always, no matter what's happening. Choose that joy in your life. Mm-hmm. You were joking about it earlier, but this episode is actually sponsored in part by the Date the Word app. You can get it for free right now on your phone, whether it's an uh, Android or an iPhone. Hope you don't use Android, but if you do, you can still you still deserve access to God's word. I would, you I would cannot get that. it if you use a flip phone. That's true. Yeah, a, a Motorola Razor is straight out. That's right. So now. sorry about that. Actually, Razors come back. Did well, you know excuse that? Excuse you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. No, it doesn't look the same. But it's it's a razor. Had someone write into the show this morning with a question that I thought was too good to pass up. This one is actually really really good. Okay. Who is the slickest character in the Bible? Slickest, like, like, like just suave, like, suave, like, like, okay, like, like, okay, talk so, his way out of a situation. Yeah, so when I say when I say slick, I'm talking like a Jack Sparrow type. Always gets a way out. Always okay. just smooth All talking. Right. Kind of always kind of gets his way, like a Tom Sawyer type. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Slickest character. Um, what is a great question. I mean, Jacob comes to mind. Jacob comes to mind, but I feel like Jonah. What? Huh? Jonah? Jonah? No. Is slick? Yeah, Jonah's kind of slick. No. If, I mean, if anything, he's a little slimy from being in the belly of a, of a fish, but no, slick? Yeah, no. he's like a smooth talker. How he's is he like slick? A, absolutely not a smooth or he's talker. Like, he, he convinced all those guys. No, can I tell you? No, the, let me the, give the Lord the, convinced them. He's, he's, <laughs> let me he's in 40 days events. and y'all are in trouble. All right, here's, let me give you an order of events No, I wasn't here. talking about the Ninevites. I was talking about the sailors. Jonah is a but, prophet yeah, okay. no. of the Lord God himself. A what, say it again. Jonah's a prophet of the Lord God. Yeah. He says... The Lord now says, Jonah, go to Nineveh, preach, you know, preach to them. Uh huh. Jonah says, no, runs. And, and bye. <laughs> runs to the opposite direction. Uh huh. <laughs> not slick. Okay. When he gets on the boat. Yeah, he didn't try to bargain with the Lord. Yeah, nothing. When he gets on the boat, instantly the sea is just tumultuous, <laughs> not slick. He tries to lie about it, not slick, because <laughs> they, they find instantly- out. <laughs> And then he's like, all right, guys, it's It's me. me. And then he just, (laughs) he's like, y'all got to throw me overboard. So they throw him overboard. Yeah, that's not slick. As soon as he hits the sea. But I mean, I'm saying. As soon as he hits the sea, what happens? A big fish (laughs) eats him. That's not (laughs) slick. And then he's in the belly of a fish pouting. And then when he gets to the other side. Okay, okay. When he gets to the other side. Hold on, you don't have to finish. Vomits him onto land. He preaches. Everybody gets saved. That's cool. But then. Instead of being like, you know what, Lord, you were right. He pouts. He was like, Lord, you shouldn't have saved these people. Yeah, I knew you were going to save those people. Hmm. So maybe... Not wow. slick. Maybe Jonah... No. I, I'm having a hard time taking the L on this one. I, I kind of want to cut I've this I've just segment. unlocked it. This is why you think you're so slick. What do you mean? I am slick. No. I am slick. No. You're as slick as sandpaper. <laughs> no, not at all. No. You don't think if I'm a think, smooth talker? You don't you think, think I... Jonah is a slick person... It makes a lot of sense. Don't you think I'm like a like a smooth talker? I can sort of get my way out of you're about situations as slick like as, that. You're about as slick as Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh my goodness! When he's like, "We'll we'll build three tents," and Lord, 
you and then God was just like, I'm gonna have to cut this guy off because he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Let me stop you there, Peter. Yeah. Okay, Jonah's not slick. Jonah's so not who's slick. slick? Who's slick in the Bible? I think David's pretty slick. Yeah. Except when David's he did the when he did the scratching on the wall. Thing. Yeah, that was kind of yeah, crazy. that was not great. That was that was kind of um, insane. We Joseph, may do some episodes I, on Joseph, that next week. I would say is slick. Joseph or Daniel. Daniel's pretty. Daniel's slick. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel's slick. Yeah. Zacchaeus. A short guy in a tree. Mm, nice. Maybe he was just I weak. mean, maybe we're not really. <laughs> maybe. I, th- I'm. I'm thinking. I'm, yeah. Let I'm me think. think of who's New slick. Testament. New Testament. New Testament. Paul's slick, not slick. I, I love mean, Paul, yes, but he's he not slick. Paul's no, he's he not. Paul's no. Kind he of caught slick. those guys with craftiness. Remember in no. First Corinthians, he caught you by cunning. No, Paul's, I think if Paul's you roll into slick. a city and then and then stir up a riot and then get beaten in the street, that's not slick. He's a he's the he's Paul the has apostle. Paul a whole but, epistle written by him that people don't contribute to but him. But they that's said they also said that's that, that, true. That is pretty slick. He said what? <laughs> Paul has a whole epistle written by him that people don't contribute to him. I don't think that's slick. I don't think that's slick. If I think of a slick, he, I person, don't think he's a smooth. Talker. I think of I think of John the apostle because he was like, "Hey, me and Peter raced, and the beloved disciple." That's was slick. Yeah, much yeah. Quicker. Probably John. John. Is slick. John probably is slick. John. That's yeah. That's, that's a good point. Apparently, probably this John. John is not slick, but John the apostle is slick. Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Great question. You guys send those questions in because that, that's that's a fun one. I'm going to ask Dr. Shaw what he thinks. And write it in and let us know who you think is the slickest character Who's in the, the Bible. the slickest character in the slick. whole Bible? Don't say Jonah. It's don't, especially Jonah. don't say it on yeah. live radio to over <laughs> there 6 million There are no wrong people. answers except for Jonah. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah might be the biggest goober in the Bible. 252-582-5028. Is Jonah a dork? He's a little bit of a dork. <laughs> He's a little bit of a dork. 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Shout out to Jonah. We'll see you when we get to heaven. <laughs> we'll see you guys after All the break. Right, we'll be back. Elizabeth, my darling bride, what would you say is the most beneficial thing you could do for yourself in the morning? Probably drink an entire pot of coffee when sitting. I'd say that's a close second. No, the best thing you can do for yourself is to start every morning with a daily devotional. Only we had one to talk about. Well, as it turns out, we have two. Right now, you can unlock the power of daily inspiration, wisdom, and spiritual growth in our devotional series, 30 Days Through a Crisis and 30 Days to a New Beginning. Written by our pastor, Dr. Abadan Shah, and his wife, Nicole, the 30 Days devotional series is designed to reveal new biblical truths every single day. That's right. And every day is a new revelation to guide you on your Christian journey toward a more meaningful and purposeful life. You can pick up your copy today from our website, that's clearviewbc.org, or you can grab both books on Amazon, Apple Books, and Audible. That's 30 Days Through a Crisis and 30 Days to a New Beginning by Abaddon and Nicole Shaw. And don't forget, these are only the first two in an expanding devotional series, so keep your eyes peeled for future installments. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text, 252-582-5028. That's right, and we're here in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. Dr. Shah, who do you think is the slickest character in all of scripture? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> you guys asked me that one time before. I, I'm, I'm trying, trying to think. There, there's so many. So like, I don't. When I say slick, I don't mean like he's a he's a scumbag or he's like like he just he's just cool. He's not necessarily dishonest. He's just got the sauce. You know what I mean? Like Tom Sawyer's. Tom Sawyer's kind of slick, but he still does good things. He's not a scumbag. He's just you know he's a smooth talker. He's got the he's got that special something. Yeah, you know he can schmooze. Yeah, yeah. Like you ever see uh, Scrubs? Like Dr. Cox is slick. Yeah. JD is not slick. Yeah. 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 I, I would say Solomon. King Solomon was. Yeah, he's slick. Yeah, he's slick. I mean, thousand wives. Yeah. That's, how many, that's how many pretty, did he have? Like uh, 700, 700 wives, wives and 300, 300 concubines. concubines. Yeah. Thousand all together. Yeah. He had to be slick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody somebody was really into it. And then yeah. uh, I said Jonah, but then I was very quickly corrected, which I think is probably. Yeah. I think we, where we landed with Jonah, he's not slick. He's just slimy. In that he was barfed up by a whale, so he's well, literally dripping. Slime. Well, it's just it's just impossible to. So what we said was it's impossible to look cool when you try to lie, are immediately caught, tossed overboard, eaten by a whale, spat up, then you go preach a sermon and pout right after. It's impossible mm, to yeah. look cool, which yeah. is, 
I don't know why I said Jonah originally because he might be the most unslick. Yeah, he was a very how do I say this? He, very prejudiced. Yeah, Preju- prejudicial. Prejudicious. Yeah. Preju- prejudiced. Prejudicial. Probably prejudiced. Or prejudiced. Yeah, <laughs> prejudiced <laughs> man. True. Yeah, yeah. I mean, true. he was he he. Of course, I get it because the Assyrians were mean people. Mm-hmm. Right. They they would tear people apart, and so he's being told to go into like. Like we would be t- told to go, hey, I want you to go to Iran, right? And, uh, and, and then nah. tell them in yeah. Tehran that you, there's revival coming. You can be the nicest, most good-hearted person, but you are gonna have second thoughts if you yeah, get that like, assignment. Mm, yeah, no. forty days in Iran's gonna be gone. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you want to go do that I'm over good. there? I'm good. <laughs> no, I, almost, I, I don't want to do that. Here. Yeah, so, you start running towards like, what's the opposite way of Iran? <laughs> like Australia. I don't know. I mean, yeah. you could you could run into the Pacific. Well, you, you know, run you, to the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. flee to California. Yeah, you're yeah, gonna true. run to California and then jump into the Pacific. There right you there. go. <laughs> <laughs> and the whale's like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, we talked about temptation yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have a good, clever segue, so <laughs> well, I figured I'd just get you right into it. It's not a whale. It's a big fish. It's a big that fish. Yeah, fair enough. Sometimes we're tempted to gloss over it and make it a whale. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair we enough. need to understand how to deal with those temptations. Is, whale, is, is a whale a big fish? Food. No. A whale, a whale's a, a whale's a mammal, isn't it? Yeah, a whale's a mammal. But I did, I did love how David had to think about it. He was like, uh, uh, "No, I gotta really make no. sure." Yeah, it's a mammal. <laughs> We're gonna continue the conversation from yesterday's episode, talking about how to deal with temptation, specifically how Jesus dealt with temptation, and what we can learn from that. So, in light of that, what is our daily encouragement today, Doctor Shaw? As I mentioned yesterday, temptation is part of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but giving in is sin, so don't give in to temptation. Don't give in to the enemy telling you that temptation is sin. Mm. Yeah. But I will also add to that, just know that daily we're under attack. That's true. Daily. If in your home there's conflict going on right now, uh, stop. Look at your spouse. As a husband or as a wife, look at your spouse and realize that, this, that your spouse is not your enemy. Mm-hmm. Your enemy is the enemy. That's right. right. Uh, and, and that sometimes is very difficult to do when all your emotions are caught up and you're vested in that argument and you want to win that argument and there's so much in your mind is on the line, just know all those are the enemy's lies Mm -hmm. and stop. Just stop and realize the enemy is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talked about understanding yesterday the bait that the enemy uses. Mm -hmm. And it, it was funny because we always see those parallels in Eve and how, how he tempted Eve and how he tempted Jesus. But I think a lot of times, even for me, I'll neglect the, f- the fact to remember that's not just like a cool coincidence. That's the same tactics he uses on us. Right. Yeah. That's the same thing he uses on me. Yeah, you know, not I much f- has changed. Yeah. Like food. Food is a big temptation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it is for me. Same. And the same thing he did with Jesus. If you are the son of man, a son of God, command the, the stone to become bread. Mm-hmm. And very, very, very... Um, Reminiscent of Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, same temptation, Yeah, food. I mean, at the end of the day, we are very base people. True. All we really care about is what goes into our belly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Food, food. We'll do anything for it. Yeah, I remember there was one time, there was a sermon you preached one time. I think it was on 1 Corinthians uh, where all the people were acting up in the triclinium yeah. or whatever. But you're like, you have no idea. Like, you think this is just exaggerated, go find any church conflict in America today. Yeah. Most of them will be over the church supper yeah. or, or the lunch or they didn't bring yeah. this or I didn't get yeah. enough of this. That, all the time it happens over you didn't, I didn't get something and people's feelings get hurt or so-and-so showed up at the fellowship dinner or Thanksgiving luncheon or mm-hmm. something, didn't bring anything and they're over there sitting, you know, hey, you want to do this? You want to eat? Then make sure you contribute. I mean, right. this this is the level of which... At which we argue and fuss. <laughs> in America, across the world, it's the same. If you really get down to uh, to the heart of the matter, yeah. is we are, we are very, very, very base people. Mm-hmm. Um, also, keep in mind that the first fight in the church, right, in the book of Acts, mm-hmm. is over food. True. Mm. The Greeks and the Hebrews, uh, um, and 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 the Hebrew widows. Mm-hmm. And again, both of them are coming from Jewish background. Mm-hmm. One are Greek-speaking people, kind of like living in the dispersion. Mm-hmm. And the Hebrews were those living probably in Jerusalem, or at least they mostly spoke Hebrew. And they were fighting because uh, their widows were not being taken care of during the dinner. <laughs> so my 
my mama over here, right. she's a widow, uh, and she didn't get anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. And my answer would have been like, years ago. Yeah, it's like Same thing. why don't you fe- go, go buy her some food? Right. Well, that's what y'all supposed to be doing. I thought, I thought that was what y'all was doing. Maybe I was wrong. Well, how yeah. come... <laughs> So and so over there, and she's not even from Jerusalem. She's not even from <laughs> yeah. here. She How got she it. gonna get a plate? And my mama don't get a so plate. So people who don't even go to church here getting a plate before Mima does. Yeah, and that's what you're telling me. Okay, yeah. that's how we're gonna do. That's how we're. But gonna I tell do you, you know, here's what we're gonna do. We're just not gonna come. Yeah. Or we come for preaching and all. We're just not gonna stay. Yeah. People do stuff like this. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or they go to a coffee machine in the lobby and the coffee runs out. Watch them. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> that was so. He looked at his empty cup like someone needs to notice me. <laughs> I've seen it. If sigh, y'all are, hot, sigh loud enough that everyone can hear you. If y'all aren't watching the video podcast, Pastor Shaw picked up his cup and like looked at it like he was expecting somebody to notice. He yeah. Was like, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Golly, that was I mean, funny. It's, it's sad to me. It's like really. Yeah. <laughs> but one, we don't have to offer you anything. Yeah. Right. Right. We don't have to do that. Yeah. Because coming to church does not mean, hey, you got to also provide me with the beverages. Right. No, you come because this is church. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But watch when that happens. And it's it's so sad. It's like, and I've done it too. So it's not like I'm saying other people do it. I've done it. Yeah. I'm like, what am I, about that? I've, I've done that too. And it's it's kind of it's kind of embarrassing. But one of the things that used to really, really needle me is when I would get home and my drive through order was wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. why, but it would make me mad to a point where like things that should have made me that mad didn't. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I would get irrationally. I'm disproportionately mad at this thing. Right, right. And it's just, it's, it's silly, but it is a real part of being human. Yeah. And I think this, that's what the enemy Knows. Yeah, and though there's a reason the tactics haven't changed because they're effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they work. Right. They worked they on do. Eve. They've worked for millennia. They work on us today. That's mm-hmm. right. But the second bait that he used against Jesus, which is very reminiscent of the one he used against Eve, mm-hmm. is he appealed to Jesus's eyes mm-hmm. or or pleasure, so to speak. It says in Luke chapter four, verse five, then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, showed him, Mm -hmm. which means you have to see it. Mm -hmm. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. So he showed him, he saw it, and then he says, okay, you can have this all. And he, oh, go ahead. Uh, I've heard people poke fun at this, at, at the devil, you know, tempting Jesus with his own stuff. Yeah. Like Jesus is, it, it, he's God. And all of it belongs to him anyway. So like, why in the world? But yeah. there's something much deeper happening here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, also, of course, it, it lines up very well with the temptation that Eve had mm-hmm. in Genesis 3, 6, that it was pleasant to the eyes. Yeah. yeah. That forbidden fruit was pleasant to the eyes. Just mm-hmm. the way... Satan showed Jesus. Showed means you have to see. Eve also saw that the fruit was very beautiful, mm-hmm. so so precious. Look at all these kingdoms of the world. Aren't they beautiful? Mm-hmm. Aren't they powerful? Uh, doesn't that appeal to your sense of power? You can have power over all these people. Now, we immediately jump to Jesus's deity and go, wow, he didn't need that. He has the whole universe. Mm-hmm. Well, wait, 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 wait. Humanity. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, in his humanity, he's tempting him. That's true. And he does have the right because, yes, in, in a sense, he is given the authority over the world. He's the prince of the power of the air. Mm-hmm. He's the one who was given that, 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 uh, that authority to rule. So he is telling the truth in that aspect, yeah. like, I can give it to you. Yeah. Not that he would. But, but he is telling the truth. This is mine to give. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the best deceptions, right? The ones that have some truth in it. Yeah. So you latch mm-hmm. on to that truth. And yeah. I think we trick ourselves into thinking we're way stronger than we are yeah. in that the things that I look at don't won't affect me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you, like from experience, that things that I looked at when I was in high school that I had no business looking at, I can I can pull up just like that mm-hmm. in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I even think about, like, I know we've talked about this on the show before, but David, like when he... 
when he sinned against Uriah and mm-hmm. Bathsheba and like the whole fallout from that, like their firstborn baby died. It was like one of the biggest travesties in the entire kingdom. And it all started because he saw something he shouldn't have seen. Right. Yeah. You know, right. it, that what he saw put that desire in his heart. Yeah. And from there, it was it was sort of unshakable. Yeah, you know, your eyes, as the as we say that, you know, our windows to the soul. Mm-hmm. So true. What you watch, see, admire, uh, even envy or lust after through the eyes, um, they don't they don't just they don't just go somewhere and get deleted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go to a trash bin, they stay. Yeah. And so be very careful what you. As the song goes, you know, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. That's right. So don't see that video. Yeah. Don't take the second look at that person who is handsome or attractive or whatever. Don't do not do that. Don't right. don't let anything else go through your mind like, oh, I wonder what he is like. Oh, I wonder what she may be like up close. Don't, don't, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't play with fire because you do that, uh, uh, Satan knows. And he says, okay, I'll... I'll I'll work on that next yeah. time. You got away this time, but next time I know exactly what to do. So when that temptation comes, you give God the glory and move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jesus did, Eve didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good reminder for us. I mean, like we've said, the temptation itself is not the sin. It's where where you go after that. Mm-hmm. So like you just said, when the temptation comes, don't be like, oh man, I've just, I've messed up. No, recognize it. Yeah. Give God the glory and move on. And yeah. Christians will, will certainly, I think they'll do a f- more or less good job in real life. But then when it comes to like television, movies, music, the things that they put into mm-hmm. their minds yeah. and their eyes, I think there's a lot of compromising that goes on yeah. and a lot of like mm-hmm. rationalizing and justifying. Yeah. Um, and even social media nowadays is so geared and so designed like a slot machine that you keep keep scrolling it's mm-hmm. almost like a slot machine let me see what i get next let me see what i will get next let me try one more swipe mm-hmm. and let's see where it goes and you're getting new videos mm-hmm. with something else and something else and something else and if you start focusing on something which is lustful or or um some other sin that that easily ensnares you uh now the program is designed to send more of that to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. So if you take that lustful look and stop and linger on that video, you know exactly how the algorithm works. Mm-hmm. Now you'll have 15 more coming at you. Right. And a lot of and a lot of Christians are totally cool with that. Yeah. yeah. And, you and, know? And, and that's appealing to your eyes. Mm-hmm. Very much. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. changed, right? In the history yeah. of the world, no. nothing has Not changed. Satan yeah. is still using the same old baits. That's mm-hmm. right. But there comes a third one that he used against Jesus, which he also used against Eve. And it says in Luke chapter 4, verse 9, Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Hmm. So he's saying you're the son of God. You, so he's, he's almost, he's puffing Jesus' pride up or trying to puff mm-hmm. Jesus' pride up and saying you're the son of God. Even yeah. if you throw yourself off, you're the man. Yeah. You're, you're it. Show you're, him it. you're the man. You yeah. got it. You have all this power. What are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't that the same thing? I don't care whether you are a, a Fortune 500 business owner or you are the supervisor at that that job, government job, or whatever you're doing, or in your school, or in your, in the law enforcement, or even in a church setting mm-hmm. over that ministry, if he can get you with that bait of pride, mm-hmm. oh man, people will do whatever Yeah, if True. he just appeal to pride. Mm-hmm. And what happens here with uh, Eve in Genesis 3, 6 and a tree desirable to make one wise. That's what she wanted. She yeah. wanted to be wise. She wanted to have God's wisdom. Wise, yeah. And, and be very careful about wisdom when people want wisdom. Why do you want wisdom? Mm. If you really want to know, why, why do you want wisdom? To make right decisions? Do you want wisdom to help other people? To build God's kingdom? Or do you want wisdom so that people will look up to you and go, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. how do you have all that wisdom? Mm-hmm. If only I had all that wisdom. Keep in mind, 
knowledge is power. That's yeah. right. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm conflating wisdom and knowledge, but in many ways, that's what's really happening. It's well, not knowledge, it's, 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 it's wisdom mm-hmm. that we are using as power over people. Mm-hmm. So you can walk over there and hold somebody in a headlock or pull out a gun and hold them at gunpoint, or you can use knowledge yeah. and people will be paralyzed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you have so much knowledge. Well, yeah. we like to we like to say that because we like to. Um, what am I trying to say? We like to separate the two so that mm-hmm. I can have it. Just call it something else. Yeah, and everybody will applaud me for it. Uh, doesn't it happen in Sunday schools? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. where people start giving off their knowledge. Why are you why, why are you sharing so much? Why are you talking so much about this? We had a person who would do that, mm-hmm. and 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 I, I'm. I'm I didn't know what to say because I never said anything to the person, but I'm thinking, do you know that nobody in that class is enjoying your wealth of knowledge mm, other right. than you? True. Yes. yes. You, Good you're point. sharing all this stuff, but what you're really doing is like a little kid walking around flexing. Mm-hmm. Hey, look hey, at hey, me. Hey, hey, check this out. What would you do if somebody started doing that in here? <laughs> I'd, like, I'd be like, sit, sit down. down. Yeah. You, like, okay, I think he's about okay. to do it. Uh, look at the Nick. He's about to do it. <laughs> Do it, why, Nick. why are you standing up? What are you doing? Because it's, uh, it's a muscle. Yeah, Lee. Look at the. Oh my goodness. He's a muscle man. <laughs> so I mean, the the whole point is, you know, where uh, he appealed to Jesus's pride mm-hmm. that you can show off, man. Mm-hmm. You're the man. And he did the same thing with Eve with wisdom. Yeah. True. And of course, Jesus rejected that. Mm-hmm. Now there's a verse that I'm sure many of you have already thought of or as as we're talking about this and that's 1 John 2:16. And it says, it says for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Wow. I think that's that spells out so many truths right there that it's not of the Father. Yeah. All these things that Satan uses against us, even yeah. though he's quoting and twisting the word of God, it's not coming yep. from God. Yeah. Flesh, eyes, pride. Mm-hmm. Flesh, the appetite. Eyes, pleasure. And pride, of course, pride and ambitions. Mm-hmm. Same pattern. Mm. You know, and if, if anybody here is struggling with the enemy, just know God has given us in his word his pattern, his bait. Everything is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And also... The answer to temptation is also the same. Yeah. True. Where Eve failed. Eve failed because she just took it. Jesus was triumphant because he rejected the enemy and he used scripture. That's right. He used what we know in Ephesians 6, 17, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, put on the whole armor of God passage, Mm -hmm. the sword of the spirit. You you use the sword to fight the enemy. Everything else is defensive. Sword is the only weapon in the armor Mm -hmm. and it's the word of God. That's right. right. So where, where, (laughs) where Satan tried to twist his own sword using God's word, Christ actually used God's actual word, even spoken from his mouth. Yeah. 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 The first one against food. What did Jesus say in Luke chapter 4, verse 4? It says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Yeah, he's quoting Deuteronomy 4, 8. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, 8, 3, um, where the same thing was said about God's people. Because mm-hmm. see, Israel also failed. Mm-hmm. Always worried about food. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, know what they did in the wilderness? In the wilderness, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, if we'd only had that pot of meat back in Egypt, we ate good. Yes, we were in slavery. Bread but... came down from heaven. Sorry, I'm not even meaning to raise my voice, but bread came down from heaven but itself. I, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of eating the same thing over and over. We had so much variety. There's in quail Egypt. coming out of the so sky, good. dude. There's quail everywhere. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to be enslaved to have we it. We ain't good in slavery. Oh, man. It reminds me of the the, uh, the Veggie Tales thing where the guy's like, remember back in Egypt when we had the pots of meat? And then the peas like, we, we were, were in slavery. slavery. <laughs> the second one is pleasure. Mm. And here Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him, alone, him only you shall serve. Mm-hmm. True. Right? And he was quoting Deuteronomy 6.13. And for the third bait, which was pride, this time Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And he was quoting from Deuteronomy 6.16. Mm. Yeah. So throughout 
this temptation, Jesus used the Word of God. Yeah. Do you feel like people give in to temptation so much because they're just giving in to emotion? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't think emotion is what tempts us, but our emotions definitely get in the way of us circumventing or, or overcoming temptation, I feeling. guess I should yeah. say. Feeling. Temptation preys on that feeling. Yeah. It's been, I think that's where Eve felt, felt that, that pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. He, she felt it. Mm-hmm. And that's where Jesus did not go to feeling. He went to scripture. Mm. And so feelings are not evil. I sometime, sometime back, somebody was trying to correct me. And I, I don't stand above correction. So if somebody is correcting me, but it's in the right direction, I, I receive it. But he was like, you know, I know you say a lot about emotions, but you know, God made emotions. And emotions is part of who we are. I'm like, I, I don't disagree with you one mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. No problem. You should love the Lord with your heart, you know, emotions as well. Having said that, when I'm referring to feelings are feelings that are so strong that you will compromise anything, your health, your well-being, your behavior. You will do whatever because that feeling is so strong you go with it. Right. I mean, God also created sex, but we certainly put boundaries on it. Right. There's, so there's no reason to think emotions are a boundaryless yeah. thing. So if that feeling wants you to wallow in self-pity, mm-hmm. you'll go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that feeling gives you the license to get angry, you'll go for it. If the feeling leads you to pout, you'll go for it. You'll do whatever yeah. because the feeling is your master. That's yeah. right. And yeah, it's, it's a terrible master. can't be led by our feelings. We have That's to be right. led by faith. That's and right. we have to look to Christ as our example. And like we've said on today's episode and yesterday's, yesterday's episode, not just the example for us and how to fight temptation, but the one who has fought and won the battle for mm-hmm, us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Jesus was more than our example. Yeah. yeah he, um, every, every step of the way, he quoted scriptures and all of that. But in, in those temptations, in a sense... He was not only successful where Eve failed, but he was also the. Uh, he also reversed what where God's people mm-hmm. failed. Yeah, you know, in a sense, he's the new Israel. Mm-hmm. Again, don't think for a moment I'm saying that Israel has been replaced because I didn't say anything about the church here. Right. No, but Jesus is that Israel. He Jesus. succeeded where they failed. But right. That doesn't mean that they're out of the picture. They, right, right. He is the servant that Israel was supposed to be. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, Isaiah talks about the suffering servant. So Jesus was that servant who obeyed. And, uh, and then it says in Hebrews 2.18, For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Mm. That's a powerful verse. So it's not just follow Jesus' examples, but be near to him. Yeah. Keep right. your eyes on him. Yeah, he'll help you. Yeah. yeah. He'll help you overcome. You yeah. feeling despondent? Ask Jesus. Yeah. You feeling hopeless? Ask Jesus. Uh, you feeling worthless? Come to him. He knows it all. True. And he will fill your heart with himself. Not just he'll give you those things, but he'll fill your heart with himself uh, because he knows what you need. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a great point. How can I just, on my own power, do the things that Jesus does? Yeah. yeah. I can't. Yeah. It's not just something that you need from him. You need him. That's right. Amen. Amen. So good. If today was helpful for you in overcoming temptation and understanding how to approach temptation, write in and let us know, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget you can partner with us financially on that same website. Be a part of what God is doing through the Clearview Today Show and help us impact the nations with the gospel. John, what's on deck for tomorrow? We got lightning round questions. My phone, my inbox is just bursting at the seams with all y'all's questions. Thank you so much for sending them in throughout the week. We got a lot this week. So we're going to try to our best to get through all of them. If we don't get to yours, obviously we're going to hit it uh, in another lightning round questions. But Dr. Questions will be in the building tomorrow. Stay tuned. Very nice. Make sure you guys are here. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.